Volleyball. Introduction. Volleyball is a popular sport which can be played both indoors and outdoors. It appeals to people of all ages and skill levels. It is fast paced with constant jumping and running and thus provides a strenuous aerobic workout. It also requires mental alertness and quick, precise physical reactions. Many associate volleyball with the beaches of Southern California and in fact, a number of professional players got their start by playing beach volleyball. However, volleyball is popular not only on the beaches, but in, vir in virtually every country of the world. In 1964, it was officially recognized as part of the Olympic Games. History of the Game Volleyball originated in Massachusetts in 1895 when the director of a local YMCA used the bladder of a basketball for a ball and a tennis net as the first volleyball net. The game was regulated by the YMCA until 1928 when the United States Volleyball Association was founded. How volleyball is played. The name volleyball is not an entirely accurate description of this sport. The object of the game is to hit the ball over the net in such a way that the opposing team cannot return it. Volleyball is played on a court about 30 feet wide by about 60 feet long. The net is 3 feet high and spans the width of the playing area. The top of the net is positioned about 8 feet in men's volleyball from the floor or playing surface. The modern volleyball is about the size of a soccer ball and weighs between 9 and 10 ounces. The game is played by two opposing teams with six players on each team. Once the ball is put into play, it is volleyed back and forth between the teammates up to three times before it is hit over the net or until, or until it falls to the floor, is hit out of bounds, or a team commits a foul. The same player may not make a hit twice in a row. Even if the ball hits a player by accident, it counts as one of the three touches allowed per side. However, if a player blocks a spike, the block is not considered a hit. Volleyball scoring systems. Rally point scoring. The team winning a rally scores a point. When the receiving team wins a rally, it gains a point and the right to serve, and its players rotate one position clockwise. The best of three or best of five games will win matches. Each non-deciding game will be won by the team that first scores 25 points with a minimum two-point advantage. If there is a deciding game, it will be won by the team that first scores 15 points with a minimum two-point advantage. Side out scoring. Only the serving team may score a point except in the deciding game when rally point scoring is used. When the receiving team wins a rally, it gains the right to serve, also scoring a point in the deciding game, and its players rotate one position clockwise. Rotation ensures that players at both the net and the back zone of the court. A team wins a game by scoring 15 points with a two-point advantage and wins the match by winning the best of three or five games. In the event of a 16-16 tie, the team scoring the 17th point wins a non-deciding game with only a one-point advantage. In a deciding game, there is no point cap. Almost all schools have changed from side-out scoring to rally point scoring. Rally scoring looks very similar to a side-out game, with the main difference being a point scored every time the ball is blown dead. What constitutes a match when you rally score? Teams will play the best three out of five games. Game point for the first four games will be 25 points. You must win by two points. The fifth and deciding game is played to 15. Again, you must win by two points. How much time should be allotted for matches that are rally scored? Most three out of five rally matches end in three games. The approximate length of time for a game, not including the warm-up, is less than 20 minutes. Three game matches take approximately 60 minutes, while five game matches take approximately 90 minutes. The nature of volleyball allows games to be substantially shorter when one team is strong and another weak. Rally scoring no longer accommodates long non-scoring periods during a game or a match. What is the let serve? The let serve is a ball that when served hits the net without touching the net antenna and continues across the net into the opponent's court. The let serve is a playable live ball. The let serve is a strategy used to keep the game moving with fewer interruptions in play. With the let serve, there is no longer a need to touch the net when giving the signal to serve. Timeouts. Each team is allowed a maximum of two timeouts per game. A timeout is a maximum of 60 seconds 
although play may resume sooner if both teams are ready prior to 60 seconds. Extra timeouts are not granted during rally scoring, nor are timeout accumulative during a match. The game has a total of 15 points. If a team fails to serve properly, return the ball, or commits any other fault, the opponent wins the rally and scores the point. Each game must be won by a two-point margin. A match consists of either three or five 15-point games. The team which wins two in a three-game match or three in a five-game match games is the winner of the match. Volleyball requires a referee who generally has the final word regarding points in dispute, an umpire who assists the referee, a scorekeeper, a timekeeper, a linesman. Even though there may be officials present during a game, players who commit fouls are expected to call their own mistakes. Skills and techniques. The ready position and jump. One of the basic positions in volleyball is called the ready position. The knees are slightly bent with hands at waist level and elbows near the body to allow the player to concentrate on the ball. Players should learn this position so that time is not wasted when the ball is hit. Jumping is always done near the net. Players should practice jumping so that they do not touch the net or bump into or injure other players. They should also always remember to jump parallel to the net. The serve, overhand and underhand. Serving is a crucial skill for the volleyball player to learn. The cardinal rules of serving are simple. Do not step on a boundary line and get the ball over the net. The overhand serve is the most popular and effective serve. It is similar to a tennis serve. The ball is thrown into the air so that it rises a few feet above the server's head. As the ball comes down, the right arm, if you are right-handed, is raised up and back while the elbow comes forward. The arm is then extended at the elbow and the server hits the ball with the heel of the hand. The underhand serve is a good serve for beginners to use. It is simply another way of getting the ball over the net. The ball is held in one hand and hit by the heel of the other hand. The underhand serve is generally not as effective as the overhand serve. The pass or set. The pass is a difficult move for many beginning players. This skill looks easier than it actually is when performed. Once the ball is served, the player who will pass the ball gets into position under the ball with knees bent, hands up, and fingers cupped. All the fingers and the two thumbs contact the ball, but the ball does not touch the palm of the hand. When the ball is in the air over the side over the serving side's court, it may be passed up to three times before it is returned over the net. One player cannot pass the ball twice in a row. Note that the overhead passes are not used when the returning ball is a spike. The spike. The spike is one of the most difficult plays in volleyball. A player has to run, jump, and hit the ball to a specific spot on the other side of the net. However, it is the best offensive move in volleyball and it should be learned. Generally, a spiked ball is hit with an open hand. However, unless a player is quite experienced, spiking a ball can sometimes result in the ball going out of bounds or into the net. Remember that practice and timing, jumping, and hitting are required to spike correctly. A spiked ball hit properly can move up to, a up to 100 miles an hour. The forearm bounce pass. The bump is used for receiving serves and spike balls. This shot is easy to execute because the ball simply bounces or bumps off the clasped hands, wrists, or forearms. The purpose of the shot is to bounce the ball into the air so that a teammate can get under it to make a setup, a move usually to direct the ball to the spiker. One hand bounce pass dig. This is a recovery shot and is used if the ball is received, the ball received is low and off to the side of a player. If you cannot make a bump pass, use a dig or save a pass instead. In this move, the hands are cupped. They are then placed under the ball just before it hits the floor. The block. This move is used chiefly as a defensive position to stop spiked balls. As with spiking, timing is important in blocking. A player must anticipate an opponent's spike and position him or herself accordingly. The blocker then jumps just after the spiker has jumped. The blocker's arm should be extended upward with fingers spread wide apart. This allows the ball to bounce off the heels of the blocker's hands and land on the opposite side of the net. This is the only move in volleyball that allows the player's hands to go over the top of the net. Equipment and clothing. Standard clothing for playing volleyball is comfortable sportswear, which allows for free movement. 
Gym shoes are a must since most gyms do not allow anyone on the floor in regular shoes. When played on the beach, attire ranges from gym clothes to swimsuits. Many play barefoot in the sand. Volleyball notes and news. Stanford completed an amazing three-year journey from a 3-25 season in 2007 to a national championship in 2010 with a dominating 3-0 victory over Penn State in the finals of the NC2A men's volleyball tournament. And that's the end of this packet.